I'm about to share something that might upset a few people. I'm gonna get something off my chest that I've been noticing for a while and that I think needs to be addressed. And it's my job with what I do in the industry to keep a finger on the pulse of where things are going and where things might be going wrong. Now, I am not holier than thou when it comes down to nutrition. Everybody has an opinion, but one thing that I can recognize is patterns and that we are starting to follow some of the same patterns in the nutritional space that we are following in the medicine space that makes the whole medical community and the whole world of medicine so kind of messed up in the first place. So we'll address all of this. We're gonna talk about how nutrition is kind of tying in with medicine in a weird way right now. And we'll talk about how we tend to just put a scab over a wound in a lot of cases rather than actually treat the issue, even with nutrition. Okay. Hey, do make sure you hit the red subscribe button and hit that bell icon if you haven't already. And then after this video, please check out Thrive Market down below in the description. Not because there's any real tie-in with this video, but because they're a big supporter of this channel and it supports this channel if you support them. So there's a link down below after you watch this video. They're an online membership-based grocery store and quite frankly, it's awesome anyway. Okay, so here we go. One of the problems, or probably the biggest problem with medicine is that it's very myopic. It's very short-sighted. Okay. Now, a lot of this comes from the history of medicine, right? Okay. When medicine was first coming to be, it was all about treating acute issues, right? Someone would get injured or there'd be an infection and we needed to give antibiotics and we needed to treat an acute issue. Okay. So they developed this mindset of patch it up, fix it up and go. Well, as we've evolved and as dietary changes have come to boot, we all of a sudden start seeing that most people are suffering from metabolic diseases, okay? They're diabetes, even Alzheimer's, which can still be considered metabolic to some degree. Okay, we're seeing more of that. Well, guess what? A quick fix antibiotic type Band-Aid doesn't work in that, right? So that's why we're starting to see such a problem. It's the myopic view of the medical community is fix the short term, okay? Don't fix the long issue. And it's not because they're bad or evil or anything. No, it's just the way that the mindset is. Well, I'm gonna to get to why this makes sense with nutrition in just a second, but you gotta stick with me, okay? So here's the thing. We look at it with insulin. It's a perfect example, right? We have diabetes. We have insulin resistance. Okay, so someone eats a high sugar diet, so they develop insulin resistance because their body just you know, needs more insulin to process the sugar to the point where it can't actually process it. So then you end up with high levels of glucose and high levels of insulin and it just compounds. Well, what's the fix with the medical community? The fix with the medical community is give them insulin so that they can continue to eat sugar. Why? Well, because it works, it's a short fix, but is it fixing the actual problem? No, and I think all of us know that, but that's just my example because I'm going to get to what's wrong with the nutritional community, including, yes, including my very own keto community and including the carnivore community and including some of the other other very myopic communities that are out there right now. We have to not be dogmatic. We have to be open on this. Okay. So here's another situation. And I think a lot of you can agree with this one. Calories in, calories out. Another myopic situation, right? Of course, in the short term, if you reduce calories, you're going to lose weight. Of course, in the short term, if you increase calories, you're going to gain weight. But that is so myopic. That is such a myopic way of looking at weight loss. Why? Because if you reduce calories, then what happens in six months? Well, then your basal metabolic rate is lower and you can't lose weight anymore, so you're forced to reduce more calories. It's the same situation, but flipped as it is with insulin, right? Okay, we have someone that has diabetes, so we give them more insulin and more insulin and more insulin so they can have more sugar and more sugar and more sugar. It's the same thing with calories in, calories out. If we think that process, then Okay, we reduce calories, problem solved. Well, six months later, we gotta reduce calories more and reduce calories more and reduce calories more, but we've never actually fixed the metabolic issue at hand, which is the metabolic dysfunction, right? And that's the things that we need to address through fasting, through the ketogenic diet, through all this stuff. So I rest my case on that one. But now I need to talk about kind of the nutritional side of things. Let's start with FODMAP or low FODMAP diets, okay? So FODMAP stands for fermentable oligosaccharide polysaccharide monosaccharide and polyols, right? So FODMAP, okay? What that means is we reduce specific fermentable sugars and fermentable carbohydrates and fibers, and things like that, in an effort to uh, reduce bloating and reduce irritable bowel syndrome and everything like that. So again, nutrition becoming myopic. Think about this. We reduce something that triggers an acute issue, bloating, irritable bowel syndrome, by getting rid of potentially very good foods. 
but we become dogmatic about that. So we never again consume these specific fibers, these specific sugars, these specific carbs, these specific veggies, because they're going to affect us and they're going to cause a problem. How myopic is that? Don't you see the relationship with that, just as we do with the problem with the medical community? It's the same darn thing. And my point is not to say that FODMAP is bad. No, FODMAP is great, but it perhaps should be used in acute settings, just like you would use an antibiotic in an acute bout of infection. Okay. Anyhow, I digress, but let's move on to another one. The keto community, and specifically when we start talking about carnivore, and I will go on record and say, I like carnivore. I like the carnivore diet. I feel like people need to be a little bit cautious though, because I just don't want you to be short-sighted with it. Use carnivore, use it to your advantage. But remember that one of the reasons why you're feeling so good is because of the elimination of other things and you're potentially just scabbing a wound. So you have inflammatory issues. Are you dealing with the actual metabolic root of the issue? Are you fixing the actual problem that is triggering inflammation? Why, outside of some potential genetic factors, are you having issues with XYZ food when someone over there is not having issues with XYZ food? Perhaps it's an issue with your metabolism that that person doesn't have. And perhaps they have an issue with their metabolism that you don't have that makes us all unique snowflakes when it comes down to our problems. But does that mean that by scabbing a wound, by doing something that just eliminates those foods, we solve the problem? We solve the symptom. And we once again have fallen into our own trap of being myopic and so myopic to the point that we become dogmatic. Does that sound familiar? High carb, low fat, you have to eat a bunch of carbohydrates. Does that all sound familiar, right? Okay, fat is bad. We become dogmatic with our short term approach. So we are in essence just everything that is wrong with this. And I am guilty of this too because I preach a lot of keto stuff. I preach a lot of fasting stuff. And sometimes to the point where I get so passionate, it comes across dogmatic. But one of my important things that I like to make a stand for in the industry is remembering that science is always about challenging a hypothesis and learning and growing because we cannot determine everything that is happening within the body by looking at one test tube. It changes, it evolves, and we have to think bigger. What is the root cause and how do we just eat better? Perhaps keto and carnivore and FODMAP are ways to heal specific issues, but we have to remember they're just another tool in our toolbox. So keep open-minded and just be healthy.